President's Demining 2010 initiative, first and foremost, is a demonstration of the President's personal commitment to getting landmines out of the ground and assisting in the global effort for humanitarian demining. On April 24th, I went to Africa on a fact-finding mission sponsored by the United Nations Association. Our first stop was Maputo, which is on the coast of Mozambique. It was the perfect place to start this trip on landmines. Welcome to Mwamba and to the minefield in Mwamba. Ladies and gentlemen, the main thing that I wish to say to you is that you are inside of a live minefield and for safety reasons, please, we need to be controlled this morning. I'm the man responsible and I don't want anybody to uh, be injured or lose a leg or get lost even. What I wanted to show you here is what a mine looks like in the ground. These mines have not been put there for this demonstration. And then at the end of your walk through the minefield, we will destroy some of those mines. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, these are the equipment that we use to clear the minefields manually. Uh, mine detectors, we have gloves, sun hats, brush, armor, and training chairs. I have uh, a deminer here which is going to demonstrate for the people who are coming by the first time to a live minefield. Once the landmine is detected, it is marked with a red flag and then scheduled for detonation. When they're ready to light their charge, I'd like you to do one small thing. Close your eyes. Imagine that you're in that minefield, that you come from that village over there, that you're a, a mother or a child or a husband that's just going about your daily business to look for wood or to look for food. And when you hear that sound of that bang, imagine the catastrophe that's just happened in your life. And then you'll get a sense for what these people have to live with on a daily basis. <laughs> there is a three million dollar demining project which two million has already been funded. Our next stop was Angola. Angola was colonized in the 1500s by the Portuguese. The colonial economy revolved around the slave trade until the late 1840s. It wasn't until 1975 that Angola gained its independence. Since then, it has seen three decades of civil war. 
This has resulted in an estimated 7 to 15 million landmines. What are we flying on? We're flying on uh, reused Russian helicopters that the Russians have donated to the United Nations. What was your definition of a Russian helicopter? Uh, it's not a... You asked me if it flew. Oh, yeah. I say it doesn't. It beats the air into submission. <laughs> Where's the oil leak? We want... We were on our way to a small village just outside of Luanda. As we flew over the jungles, I looked for wild animals. I was later told there are no more. I also noticed that the villages had all been abandoned. Ambassador Adams, United Nations Association. What a greeting. <laughs> okay, what we're going to do is we're going to get in the 4x4s mostly. Okay. We're going to go to a place where only 4x4s can get in. Chief Barrara? Chief Superintendent Barrara. Chief Superintendent Barrara. Is, is, has peace come to Angola? Uh, the situation is erratic. Sometimes, in the present moment, the situation is sort of tense. Sort of tense? Yes. Welcome, everybody, to the Ouija water pump minefield. There's plenty of room here. This is safe, guys. This is safe. Come on in. Please come on in. Come on in. He was doing the, the, the second step, locating the mine. The detector has already sounded, so now he started with the third step, which is prodding to the earth. Uh, I, don't, I don't think so. Yeah. Even if there's a 1% chance. Uh, because of your visit, they have posted police, ANP, Angola National Police, and soldiers along this road. Because this is a long strip of road that's very uncontrollable, you can see how high the grass is. You can't see who's out there. So can you tell me what's going on on the radio right now? Um, I don't think so. Not oh, no. Okay. We were very aware the situation was still unstable in Angola. In school, the children learned about the dangers of landmines. There is a minefield, active minefield, two to three hundred meters away from here, and it will be the next location for the demining. My name is Tal Raviv. Uh -huh. I'm a uh, volunteer from Israel, working as a mine awareness consultant in UNICEF. How do you feel about landmines? It is a very cruel, silent tool against mainly civilians. Is there anything that you could say to help raise awareness of the situation here? Well, be very grateful that you live in the States and don't have to worry every step you take if you are going to blow up or not and if you have any way to participate uh, to participate in activities uh, against mines do it because it is important for for everybody is it just rehabilitating Mas, soldiers or is it also women and children women and children uh, all victims of war. See what, what's going on is they're training carpenters, shoemakers, and tailors. There have been 800 people since 1989 who have come through here. The medical center gives the prosthetic and rehabilitation physical, and then they come here to get reintegrated into a productive career. The victims are usually women, or mostly women and children from this? At, at this point, they're primarily women. They're over 50% are women and children. And so that's why the focus really should be towards uh, um, women and children at this particular point. So that was my question back there. <laughs> why don't we see one or two uh, uh, women in those, those classrooms? Located at the Horn of Africa and bordering the Red Sea, Eritrea officially celebrated its independence on May 21st, 1993, becoming the world's newest nation. On the architecture. At one time, Eritrea was colonized by the Italians, which was noticeable in the architecture. 
Although for the last 30 years, Eritrea has been at war with its neighbor, Ethiopia, which has left the entire country stripped of its trees and littered with landmines. Where are we right now? This is Ashagogo. And what is that? that this is the demining regional headquarters for the first company. I mean, the colonial history of Eritrea, uh, in 1557 up to 1886, the Turks ruled Eritrea. From 1886 to 1941, the Italians again ruled Eritrea. From 1941 to 1952, the British came. Then in 1952 up to 1962, Federation came. Then starts the, the history starts from that on. It has been going on since 1991. In those days, the enemy had the upper hands. The enemy had everything. The enemy had support from the whole of the world, I could say, especially from the Russians. At that time, we were only uh, defending the country. We had no means of support of mines or any other weapons. We had a motto. We had uh, a slogan in the, in the field. Kill the enemy with his own bullets. And according to our slogan, the mines we were getting was from the enemy actually from the mine fields. We were taking out the mines and replanting again for defense. How did you lose your leg? When I take fi uh, wood, wood for fire, for fire. firewood. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have uh, children? Or How old your family? She had six. Uh, six? Yes. You have six children? Six children. So you tell your children not to go to the minefields? And are they listening to you? We were all really impressed with Eritrea and their demining capabilities, but they were having difficulties detecting the plastic landmines. It seems the best way to detect them is by using specially trained dogs. We're here in Rwanda, and we understand there's a problem. What's the order of magnitude of the problem? The, pro the magnitude of the problem is uh, big because the land, we are now talking about three quarters, no, two thirds of the land being suspected to have mines. Two thirds of the land? Two thirds of the land being suspected to have mines. Two, two, Sorry. Sides of two thirds of the land. Two thirds of the land. Does that what impact does that have on the population of that that area? Uh, that means uh, two thirds of our population, no, more than two thirds of our population is is threatened by mines. We find that dogs complement, especially in countries like this, to, to a great degree. You know? And that's half, run about half the reason that the dogs were brought in. Dogs are good, <coughs> both, and they, they do differentiate between mines and other metal on the ground. And the fact that they can, if they're integrated properly with traditional demining techniques, it makes the operation three things. Faster, safer, and in the long run, a lot cheaper. The dogs have been trained to smell the chemicals and the explosives because of their highly sensitive sense of smell. A dog's sense of smell is a hundred times more sensitive than humans. Once they find the mine, the dog sits and marks the area. Then the deminer marks the mine with a red flag. Did you see the mechan dog on the ground down there? Love it. Mine! Mine! Love it. So what did you say the reward is? It's a ball. A ball. It's a ball. So Love a ball. After he finds a mine. He's he... going to respond. Uh -huh. After responding, then the hand is going to, to reward the dog by the ball. In the search and need for new technologies in demining, dogs are still at the forefront. Two weeks after we got back from Africa, we all regrouped in Washington, D.C. at the State Department.
is passing now through Washington. I think what Secretary Albright said was a very important and telling statistic that up until the turn of the, up until the Second World War, that 10% of victims were civilians. And in our lifetime, now in conflicts around the world, they say that close to 90% of victims are civilians. It's not to say that landmines are the cause of that, but they are certainly indicative of the way in which wars are now fought. Uh, a loose translation uh, of the Talmud's uh, definition of philanthropy. The Jews believe that true philanthropy and true giving can only be given anonymously. Not only must you give anonymously, but those that you give to cannot know who gave. And if that is the ultimate good, then the ultimate evil would be something that you do that kills someone that you don't know or maims someone you don't know, and the person that is killed or maimed doesn't know who did it from them. So in many ways, the landmine is the ultimate evil.